Hello everyone. Today we're going to see a few aspects on uh, thyroid disorders and pregnancy. One of the common questions that patients ask us is uh, uh, do patients who have thyroid disorders can have normal pregnancy or not? And the answer is a full-fledged yes. As long as they are on the correct medicines for their either underactive thyroid or overactive thyroid, planning pregnancy and conception later on should not be a problem. Now it is important to keep in mind that pregnancy is a state of increased demand. The uh, baby's thyroid takes about 12 weeks to 14 weeks to actually start fully developing as well as making thyroid hormones necessary for the child's development in the, in the mother's womb. Till that period of time, the child's development requires some amount of mother's hormone as well as uh, for its uh, normal growth and development. So in the first three months, the mother's thyroid in fact supplies hormone not only for the mother but also for the child. So the, so the increased demand putting a little bit more stress on the thyroid gland for the mother. Uh, it's important that the mother's thyroid is able to cope up with the stress and deliver the NF wired hormone so that the mother's thyroid functions are quite normal. In a few patients, this may not be possible and the mother's thyroid may not be optimal enough to supply the demands required for pregnancy and they may develop what is called an underactive thyroid. One aspect of thyroid dysfunction pregnancy where there is an underactive thyroid detected in the mother because of an increased demand posed by the pregnancy. There is also another interesting disorder that can happen during pregnancy where it is called the overactive thyroid. The placenta of, from the mother's uterus can actually make hormones which can actually stimulate the thyroid gland to make more thyroid hormone production. So this can in fact cause a temporary or a transient overactive thyroid. And this is usually a temporary phenomenon that happens for about 12 to 14 weeks and then after about 12 to 14 weeks the HCG or the gonadotropin hormone that comes from the placenta actually starts going down and the thyroid then returns back to normal. The second important question that comes up in the clinic is should every pregnant woman who comes to the clinic for the first visit get a thyroid check done? And I think the answer is a straightforward yes. I think in a country like India where the prevalence of undiagnosed thyroid problem is quite high, it may be a sensible and in fact a economically a simple option to check a TSH level to make sure that the mother's thyroid functions are in fact in the normal range in the first trimester of the pregnancy. If it is abnormal, then the, the gynecologist or the obstetrician can decide on what needs to be done as a next step. If you are a patient who has thyroid dysfunction and you are on replacement thyroid hormone and you are planning pregnancy, it may be an important thing to make sure that the thyroid functions have been checked before you plan pregnancy and make sure your TSH levels are in the right range, uh, usually between below 2.5 or below 3 and then plan pregnancy. As soon as one gets pregnant, if you are already on thyroid hormone and you get pregnant, it is sensible to increase your dose to an extra tablet on Saturday, an extra tablet on Sunday, so as to keep up with the increased demand that pregnancy already poses for the mother. So uh, that's a simple technique that can be done to adjust and of course you will see your endocrinologist and gynecologist to make further fine tuning of your thyroid hormone medicine adjustments. How do we, uh, any dietary restriction required for thyroid patients and again the answer is clear cut no. Uh, when the amount of iodine that is there as well as amount of uh, interference that are there in some of the vegetables like cabbage, cauliflower, radish, um, that is very unlikely to affect the thyroid gland particularly in the amount that we actually take. So there is, there is no frank restriction of diet in patients with underactive thyroid. The other question that comes up is when to take the thyroid medicine during pregnancy and this is an important uh, message. The thyroid medicine has to be taken in the morning empty stomach. Most of the times the pregnant woman is also on uh, iron, calcium supplements. It is important to space the thyroid medicine and the calcium and the iron supplements in a gap of about 4 hours. So you take the thyroid in the morning and after a 4 hour gap usually I give the calcium medicines in the afternoon and the iron medicines in the night. 
So there is a enough spacing out between these medicines so that the absorption of thyroid medicine is unhindered. The next important message would be that how often do you check your thyroid functions? I think again it depends on a case to case basis. You have to mo uh, check with your gynecologist as well as your endocrinologist in terms of how to monitor your thyroid functions if you are on thyroid medicines uh, during the pregnancy. And what happens after you deliver the child? After you deliver the child, usually the dose of thyroid medicine will start coming down. Usually if it's an underactive thyroid, the dose of the levothyroxine usually comes down after you deliver the child. And usually on follow-up in two to four months, the dose may be readjusted based on the condition of the thyroid gland. It is also important for the baby to have their thyroid checked. Different hospitals, different universities, different institutions have their own practice. But all said and done, it is important that the child, the newborn, also gets a thyroid checked, preferably on about day three or day five if they're drawing a blood sample from the child. If they're doing it from the cord blood, it's usually done on the first day after the child is born. So depending on the which sample has been done, the, there are cutoffs that may change. But it's important to make sure that the baby's thyroid is also checked, not just because the mother has having a thyroid problem, but as a universal screening tool.